Good morning, my angels. Welcome to another session with me, Tikra, your humble host here at Sacred Sagittarius Angels and is all your first original Sagittarius only channel here on YouTube where I bring you angelic messages and positivity in life for the Sagittarius community. Happy birthday to you if today is your birthday as we continue to celebrate for the next week or so Sagittarius season. So happy birthday to all of my Sagittariuses and course watchers who watch the channel. We're gonna tap into the mid-month energies overall for the month of December. Unfortunately, because it is a busy birthday month and I've celebrated my own, my schedule has been a little chaotic, but I do wanna give you a mid-month general reading for the month of December and I will be posting several readings that I was not able to do in the beginning of the month I will do for mid-month so there will be a couple of love readings and other readings regarding your finances and career that you can definitely tap into this weekend so get your coffee get in your prayer space find some time to get away from your kids or the spouse and gather all this information and messages that the angels in the universe is going to be blessing me with for you so as we cleanse the space Let's take a deep breath in. Exhale out. It's the weekend. We're going to be stress-free. We're going to receive all these messages that I'm going to be bringing for you after this general reading. I will be posting your weekly weekend reading for love and then your weekly weekend reading in, for general. Then we have a couple of other readings, again, pertaining to your ancestors, protection, um, from evil or, or anti, you know, negative, toxic forces, messages about love, your lucky numbers, your angelic numbers. So there's going to be a few things going on. And all that I ask, all that I ever ask is that you give me a thumbs up, show your support. I do this freely. My channel is not monetized. I am not compensated financially. The way how you show your love and extend back the energy that I give you is by sharing, liking, and commenting on the videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you again in advance. Okay. So let's get started. What is the overall general messages for Sagittarius for this mid-month December? I'm going to tap into first with the messages from the angels. The first message we get is joyful times. A celebration is coming up, Saggy. Possibly a wedding, a proposal, a birthday, or some type of achievement. So you can be having a celebration. Um, maybe you got a promotion on your, your job, or you're being recognized for your civil duties or volunteer services. It will be a wonderful time in your life. So some of you might be shopping this weekend for those particular outfits, or you know, you're, you're writing your speech and you're excited. And for many of you, it could be a long waited overdue recognition. You know, and we don't do things purposely to be recognized, but it is great when people give us our flowers now when we're here. So congratulations to those of you who will be celebrating or you're being recognized for some type of achievement or some type of action or good deeds you have done for your community and mankind. The angels also come with the energy of the unseen. There's a greater force at work behind the scenes taking care of all the details. Let go of your specific expectations. So there is something that you are experiencing or that you are handling or going through in life where you're praying for a good outcome. You're praying for it to be in your favor. There is a lot going on behind the scenes, which normally is done in our life. But if you continue to have faith and don't try to take too much control and don't build too much anxiety and have a high expectation, but just accept whatever happens, whether it's in your favor or not, good or bad or indifferent, it will unfold in its proper time. So there are greater forces at work behind the scenes in our life, our angels, our God, right? Our ancestors. And we just sometimes got to let them help us. If we pray to them, then we've got to have faith in them that we're going to let them answer our petitions and help us behind the scenes. So don't stress yourself out too much wondering when is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? Just live your life. Keep up the faith, keep praying, and wait for divine timing. We also get the message of abundantly gifted. You are powerfully favored, Sagittarius. You have a supernatural gift, 
and will be abundantly successful in this lifetime. Believe in your gifts. So this is showing you a picture of physical gifts. You have physical gifts, but more especially you have intuitive gifts, spiritually gifted to you in which you are to use. And with the word abundantly, that's a great force. Just like how you have great forces working behind the scenes in your life, you have a great force of abundance within you. And I know sometimes with life pressures, with life's ups and downs, with our own doubts and insecurities and not even including what other people might put upon us, we tend to forget that we have these gifts. We don't rely on them or things, again, we don't get the ending that we want we curse our gifts or we don't believe that they have any validity. The gifts that God has given us, they were given to us for a reason and they do have strength and they do have power. But we have to be able to give them the power and enhance the power in them. One, by living a good life and also by using those gifts accordingly, using them for good and not for evil. So you are powerfully favored and as long as you can remember that you can always tap into your intuition to find the answers that you need in this life you will never worry about not having because you know that god in the universe has you you are supernaturally gifted so you are gifted in a different plane we're, we're talking beyond the talents of just being a creative artist. We're talking about your spirituality, the ability for you to heal, to be an empath, to love, to, to bring God's light to others. And with these gifts, you have the potential to be abundantly in this lifetime. So a lifetime can carry a span from the time of your birth towards the latter years of your life. So it doesn't mean that these gifts are going to show themselves or it's going to fulfill themselves to the highest peak right out the bat. No, it's during your lifetime. So it can occur during many times of your life or it can occur in a particular cycle of your life. Again, the successfulness in your abundance will vary from saggy to saggy and from person to person based upon your free will and your actions. At the bottom of the deck, we have the message of doubtful heart. You must resolve the doubt in your heart before you're able to move forward because a doubtful heart will never believe. And that is so true. You can't have faith in the unseen. You can't celebrate and believe that you are to be recognized and that you should be celebrated. You can't believe and receive the abundance during the course of your lifetime if you doubt that you have these gifts, if you doubt that you're worthy, if you doubt that you're a child of God and that he has mercy and he can work miracles in your life. So you must resolve the doubts in your heart, not just the doubts in your love relationship and all your relationships, but the doubts that you have of your own creation and your own ability and talents and gifts. Because I know life can knock us down. It can take the wind out of our sail. But we, as a spiritual being, especially being the sign of Sagittarius, where many of us are truly spiritually gifted in a very supernatural way, we can't let a doubtful heart overtake us because it will make us succumb to toxicity and it will not enable us to achieve the abundance and to be the real tentative spiritual soul that we are so whatever doubt you have in your heart about your existence what you can do what you can create your relationships just your life in general and your purpose you need to resolve it you need to work on it and you need to get rid of it and restore it with the faith that god has put in you from the time of your birth As we go on with the messages, let's first tap to see what general message we get for this mid-month December energy. And we get, don't get caught up in your emotions. Don't get caught up in your emotions. Sometimes our emotions can lead us to have a doubtful heart. Because sometimes when you think with your heart and not your head, you could be a little bit more sensitive. You could be a little bit more doubtful, right? So. Be practical and be realistic with your feelings, your thoughts, and your desires for what you want to manifest and create in this life.
let's see what it what comes to your job and finances before we get into the tarot and some other clarifiers what we have for mid-month general messages we're going to throw some in in here but you will also get a mid-month direct message pertaining solely to career and finance so just give me a little teaser here well, they get the card of debt pay. Congratulations. Look at that. Ripping up those credit cards, ripping up those IOU, those collection notices. Many of you will be celebrating, hopefully, during this birthday season or as we approach towards the end of the year that you have accomplished your goal of being debt free. And for others of you who haven't, this can be a goal that you can work towards. With the message internship, some of you might have difficulty finding employment. But in the meantime, you might be saying, well, you know what, to just get my foot in the door, maybe I can volunteer, maybe I can do an internship. Internships are great ways to get into a particular field, especially for my senior Saggies or even my younger Saggies who are trying to get their feet wet in a new career. You're changing your careers, right? Many of you go through life cycles as the angelic number 1111 just appeared on the camera. and. Sometimes it's hard to get a job when you haven't practiced in that field and you have nothing on your resume to back up your skill set in that field. So doing an internship at a particular company can help you develop skills where in some internships actually, you can actually get paid. You might not get paid a great salary, you won't have benefits, but still it's a win-win because you're learning the trade, you're getting experience and you are getting, in some cases, you can get some type of income. We also get the message of selling. Some of you might be looking to go into the sales career, selling insurance. Maybe you see yourself owning a store and there's certain merchandise that you wanna sell. Or this could be my entrepreneurs who are looking into making products and getting them out there maybe on Amazon or you know, on eBay or some type of platform where you can sell items. On the bottom of the deck, we get micromanage. Some of you might be dealing with discomfort in your jobs where you have supervisors or middle management that is micromanaging you. And for those of you who don't know the term or what the definition of micromanage is, it's like when you have a supervisor or a manager or anyone who you report to, it could even be a coworker or someone that's training you that criticizes every little thing that you do. They don't let you come up for air. Um, they they, che they check your work, they recheck your work. It's like they don't give you the freedom and the ability to be the professional that you are. Like I said, they don't give you the room to do your work in peace. They're always questioning everything. They're, they're double checking your figures. They're double checking your emails. Um, in some cases, they might actually you know, want to be copied on emails that you send out. This is a manager or supervisor that is on your back consistently. And if you're hired as a professional to do a job and you're not an intern, there is no reason for you to be micromanaged. So some of you might be dealing with that stress of micromanagement. And, and a matter of fact, I know that that's a big problem for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people have to end up talking to HR about to, you know, about their supervisors micromanaging. Because I feel like when you're a professional, you're hired for a job because they believe in you and the skills that you have to do the job. So why not allow you the space and room to do that without micromanaging? Micromanaging is just a real addictive, obsessive way of uh, just keeping tabs on people. And, and sometimes I think it's because of the insecurities of your actual, I'm sorry, my camera's tipping here. Um, of your actual boss rather than of yourself. I apologize. Hold on one minute. I buy these fancy phone cases and I'm sorry. I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> oh, I think it's going to keep tipping. Okay, we're good. I so, I so apologize. I tried to put it on the stand with my case on I'm lazy, what can I tell you? But you get it. So that's what micromanaging does though. It it really harbors um, toxic energy. It's an unhealthy relationship. It doesn't do well for you as the employee. And 
end the company because you become unhappy. Um, you start making mistakes because you feel someone's always looking over your shoulder. It's even like borderline harassment sometimes. So for those of you who are dealing with micromanage, let's see, let's get a clarifier on that. And that's definitely something that I, you know, I don't wish upon anyone to have to deal with. Okay, so there's a celebration. So some of you could finally be seeing a change in this. Maybe you finally got tired and maybe you've pulled your, your, your supervisor or you, you went over their head to their manager or you went to HR. So there is some type of celebration. Oh, wow, look what's at the bottom of the deck. I love it, the death card. So yes, those of you who are going through this tension at your job with someone who's micromanaging you, if you take the steps to complain about it or report it or talk about it to the correct people, your HR, your managers, etc., you will be celebrating, you will be victorious, and the micromanaging will stop. It will stop, I'm feeling, in two ways. One, either you will not report to that manager anymore, or they will just speak to the manager and the manager will just cool and chill out. And don't forget, if you ever receive negative retribution because you spoke to someone about being micromanaged, that again also is harassment if they do something to um, to bother you because you made a complaint. You have every right when you are not being treated correctly on, on your job to speak. You have their employment laws and there's employment rights that you have. So I'm glad that that came up. Okay, so that's it a little bit for the careers. Now let's go into the tarot and see what we get. Three of Pentacles, Six of Wands, the Devil, and the Three of Swords. So some of you could be dealing with some heartache, some broken hearts, you know. It's never a good time to have your heart broken. It's never a good time to to part or be parted from someone that you love or care for romantically, especially around the holidays. Um, it's just a, like a really deep sting. So it, it kind of challenges you. It, it makes you not want to be in the holiday spirit. But don't let a broken romance take the creativity out of the holiday and what the meaning of the holiday is. It's a very special, special holiday. We are very special beings. Don't let anyone steal your joy from this spiritual time. With the Three of Pentacles, the Six of Wands, and the Devil card, I do feel that for many of you who are going through a particular heartache at this time, you tried to work on this relationship and your partner too could have tried to some capacity to to work on the relationship. And at one particular time, there was hope that your relationship would sustain itself. There was a way that you felt that both of you were coming back together. But one or both of you couldn't fight the temptation. So there could have been some adultery, there could have been some cheating, um, lying, unfairness, instability in the relationship. Someone could have had addictive behaviors. So overall, that is what really has brought your relationship down. Let's get a clarifier on the devil card. Four of Pentacles. Um, one or both of you could have been very unwilling to do your part financially in the relationship. If there was cheating, if there was infidelity, or if one of you had like a gambling problem, a drinking problem, any bad vice, I, f I feel like money that was meant to go to the household to pay the bills, etc., was being distributed into these other areas of entertainment and toxicity. Um, and therefore, the one person, which probably was you, Saggy, had to take care of all the responsibilities. So you had to keep a tight grip on your money because your partner wasn't doing their part financially. Let's get one more card. Yeah, like I said, you had to step into your queen of pentacles energy to manage the money and to manage the household just to keep the lights on, so to speak. Let's get a clarifier on the three of pentacles. Strength. 
Yeah, you tried to work on this relationship. It wasn't easy to do, but you believed in this relationship. You wanted to be with this person, and it took all your strength to endure whatever you were going through with them. Clarifying the Six of Wands with the celebration, the good times, Wheel of Fortune. Yes, this relationship has come full circle. There what was many good times and were many good times and there were great financial contributions from both of you in this relationship in the beginning until your partner kind of went left like i said either with the cheating or a bad vice let's see what's in the middle of the deck the six of cups you and this person could be apart right now that's attributing to why you have a broken heart but this is the energy of someone that may come back in time wanting to apologize so you might have to suffer the holidays alone with the despair but there is a sign here that this person will try to come back at a later date asking for forgiveness sometimes you just need the time and space away from someone in order for that to happen and remember this is not your love reading this is just your general uh, mid-month update i will be doing a separate general mid-month love reading um sometimes again depending on how the cards come out that is how i have to bring the message so sometimes love messages will come up in a general reading and i just have to go with the flow on where the energies guide me let's see what it is that you need to continue to work on mid-month to release in your life that doesn't serve you any purpose surrender to play Take a break from overthinking a goal. Do something fun. Play is a time of recreation and rejuvenation. Especially for my Sagis that are going through a broken heart or you might have suffered a physical or mental loss. Take time out to play. Take time to travel and enjoy life. To take time to do the things that you like to do. Whether it's being with your grandchildren or going to the park. Traveling with friends. Um, taking time to catch up with your, your, your oracle readings. Take time to play and to rest because you need that even break. You can't just be all work, work, work. You will burn out physically and mentally. And spiritually, it does your body good to have fun and to have laughter and joy in your heart. On the bottom of the deck, we get surrendered to the beautiful magic of who you are. We all have magic in us, even in the mundane aspects of our lives. Remember, Sagittarius, that you are a magical being with a uniqueness and worth that come from just being you. And that is what was said in the beginning of this reading, where I tried to emphasize to you the importance of who you are and what your worth is. And like I said, I know I'm human too. And, you know, we go through these cycles and trials in life but overall we have to remember who we are and what we come from and we have to know that we have a purpose that is so much greater than the negativity and the trials that are sent along our way so surrender to the magic of the beautiful person that you are some other clarifying messages we get for mid-month december are quietly serve you know one of the things in one of the ways, especially during the holy seasons that God wants us to do, which shouldn't be just limited to the holy season, but just in general in life, is to love one another, be kind to each other, to quietly serve. God's children, you know, when we do our work, when we volunteer, when we give to others, when you work in soup kitchens or you donate clothes or you sponsor someone in a foreign country, however you give back to mankind, you do it quietly. God's children, we don't have to brag and boast because we do it because it is within our will to do. And God knows that we have done it, okay? Only people who need notoriety go out there bragging, oh, guess what I did? And they put it on, you know, in headlights and poster boards so everyone can see and they need that recognition. God's children, we don't need recognitions. We're like the angels. We do it because it's within us to do. And we have that compassion and love. So it's a reminder mid-month December as you're going into the new year, don't forget to serve, to help others. Even when you think that you can't help, you can help. It doesn't always have to be financial help. There are many other ways that you can help people in this lifetime with your gifts and with your talents and just being there, having an opening ear and eye, you can help others in this lifetime. So do quietly serve. I'm sorry, I have the cards falling. I'm trying to pick up. We also get look forward. A reminder to march ahead. 
time keeps moving and so should you. Do not stay stuck in the past. Don't let the past hold you back. Don't rush towards the future. Look towards the future, but live in the moment. We also have become a clear channel. In order to have clarity in your life and to let the energies flow so you can receive the angelic messages in your life, you have to be a clear channel. You have to have your mind and your spirit, your chakras alive, everything free. Holding negative thoughts, holding anger and bitterness, and just not giving yourself the space to grow, the space to be able to detox and cleanse so that good things can come into your life and you can release back that energy into your universe can't happen if you're not a clear channel so you have to think of it like your mind in your life is like a chalkboard right it got a zillion things written on it but sometimes you just got to take that eraser and erase it all clean so that the right messages the spiritual messages the holy messages the gratifying messages that you need and the things that you need to do and the things that you need to be guided to along your purpose can be posted on that board and as you do them they're erased but don't sometimes i think with our arrow we shoot for so we aim for so much things in our life right we aim we want so much and that's a good thing to want but don't exceed or want more than you can actually grasp and handle so be reserved with your choices and what you want in your life and what you're aiming for as far as your goals and aspirations be a clear channel to take the time to manifest things and give yourself time to enjoy those things and to process those things before you add more to your bucket list. And then finally, in the middle of the deck, we get nurture yourself first. Something that I always remind you of and that comes up on this channel is before you can be of help to others or of any good to others, physically, mentally, or spiritually, you have to nurture yourself first because if you're not good, then you can't be good to others. Okay, in closing, we're gonna go to the T cards. And let's see what messages we get. Give you a quick shuffle. I don't want anything to fall out because this deck is so big. Okay, so many cards we're dealing with, so let's see. Now I'm going to the middle of the deck, and we get a victory in some endeavor. So some of you can look forward to a victory. Remember we got that you will be, those of you who are dealing with micromanage issues on your job, you're going to have a victory. That victory could be that or it could be something else. It could be victory in your love relationship or something else that you want to manifest. On the top of the deck, we have casket. Someone going out of your life or the end of a situation. So this is like the death card again as well. Something is ending. It could be something that you want to end or something that you're surprising that's ending, but it needs to end because it has come to an ending or what purpose it had in your life no longer needs to be in your life. It's reached it's final so something or someone in your life is coming to the end of a situation casket doesn't mean that they're physically dying it could be that maybe they're coming towards the end of suffering or maybe you know you or someone in your life is going to come to the end of a cycle of employment at a particular job or the end of a relationship it can in some cases mean transition from this life and we also get carrot opportunity or windfall so there is an opportunity for some of you those of you who are looking to maybe be an entrepreneur or you want to work for yourself you want to look at a different opportunity um you, you could take the chance but you know there's both both ends of the spectrum it can be a win-win or you can flop it really depends on how much you're putting into you wanting to do something new how much are you willing to invest your time and your energy into being self-employed let's go here in the deck we get elephant a long journey either physical or mental will leave you wiser at the end again travel so if some of you are going away for your birthday or you plan to go away for the holidays 
something might be found something you might experience during your travel is going to leave you wiser it's going to open up your eyes it might bring you to what your purpose is in life so sometimes it is good to get away because you never know that travel might have the answer within it for questions that you've been seeking and then finally with the card of the hand in need of help assistance and guidance this could be you giving a hand to someone in your life that needs a hand or this could be you finally raising your hand and saying you know what i need help because i know we're very independent we're very intellectual we're very gifted we're very strong but we too can get overwhelmed right we too have a, a way sometimes of taking on more than we can handle so it's okay to raise your hand and say you need help actually it's a very very wise thing to do in closing Today, I will do one thing I've been putting off. A whole collection of one days will lay the groundwork for the person I'm building within. I will do one thing I have been putting off. Make it, I'm sorry, again, I'm multitasking here, <laughs> doing my laundry. Um, take time each day to do something that you've been putting off. If you have it in your heart to do, please see it to completion. Lifting your self-esteem is not something easy to do, but if we work on it and if we get rid of those fears, they will disappear. But if you don't work on your fears, if you don't work on letting them go and working through them, they are always going to haunt you. They are always going to play against you. Each day you have an opportunity to feel better about yourself. Let, they, let today be the day that you start loving yourself more and believing who you are and what you can be. Make one small decision each day towards your goal, towards your dream. Believe in the strength that you have to move forward. Believe in the faith of your prayers and your petitions. And life in the universe will grant you your wishes. May you have a blessed rest of the Sagittarius season. May you enjoy the rest of December. And may you continue to come back here for your spiritual enlightenment, for your affirmations, for the positivity in life that I try to bring to you along my journey. Namaste.